it's time for Life Engineering, processes that combine science, wisdom, and spirituality to build a life of alignment. Joining Dr. Pat is your host, Gabriella Embon, bringing you bi-weekly wisdom nuggets, your step-by-step guidance to build a life of no regrets. Stay tuned as they uncover powerful processes for you to realize your true potential. Are you ready for some magic wisdom? Life Engineering starts now. Hey, everybody, welcome. I'm Dr. Pat, and I am so thrilled. I take this journey with Gabriella because if you have not listened to the other podcast, please go back and do that. This right here is one of the most critical things that you, all of us, would think about. It's the thing that either puts us forward or it's the thing that stops us dead in our tracks. And that is our ability, decision-making test. Decision-making test. What does that even mean? Life engineering is what Gabriella does. But more importantly, when we say that to you, you have a vision, you know where you're going, but why do you stop? What is it that gets in the way? Gabriella, right? What is it that gets in the way? Hello, Dr. Pat. Absolutely. What gets in the way is, am I making the right decision? We get stuck in our head. Like you said, you have a vision, you know your what. You even start taking action and walking the path. You know, for some people, that journey might feel like hiking. For others, might feel like trekking or more like a road trip. It doesn't matter. What's one thing is for sure, right, is along the path, you're going to be required to make decisions. Yeah. And a recent study showed that we make 3,500, no, 1,000, sorry, decisions a day, okay, 227 just about food. So this episode will empower our listeners to make better decisions. And of course, as a consequence, better choices for themselves so they can create the life and the vision that they are walking towards. Yeah. And you know, not all decisions are life-changing decisions. Although I will tell you, since I've been here on the East Coast, uh, in support of a very dear friend of mine, I mean, I take I I take the decision making more seriously. Um, but there are some things that are so easy to do. Like it was never even a question mark for me to come right from Chicago to here. But then there are other decisions. Can you tell us we have to know? where things are in the scale of decision making but why is it important to make a good decision i know why for me but why is it important from where you sit and how it reflects to talking about engineering life yes absolutely i think that when it comes to practicing making uh, good decisions it's important to practice the same whether we're making small decisions uh, uh, the same as if we are making life-changing decisions right it's an art that we want to implement and making good decisions is how we exercise, or making decisions in general, is how we exercise our creative power and our free will, right? It's the, the nature of the energy of the creation is not linear. It's actually the universe is uncertain. And what gives that energy, right? What shapes that energy is our intention. What gives it a shape is our intention, our focus and our vibration. So decisions are critical for us to take the energy and create what we are looking for. And basically, as we master the art of making conscious decisions, we are becoming more conscious manifestors, right? Active manifestors and not just letting life take over. We are living a life of intention with our decisions and our choices. Mm -hmm. Does it make sense? It makes total sense. And I want to tell you why it makes sense to me. Um, My best friend's dad, many, many years ago, took somebody like me who really struggled with this. And he gave me a thing to do. Just one thing. I'm I'm not even going to repeat what it is. But he gave me one thing to do to help me. And I never forgot that. And and to this day, it's part of what I look at. But people like me and others, they don't know how. They don't know how to decide. Talk about that. Well, let's talk about how not to decide first. (laughs) Okay, yeah, let's get that out of the way. (laughs) Because what we naturally do, you, me, people, right? What we naturally do is we usually turn to resulting 
when it comes to judging whether the decision was a good or a not so good one. Mm. And I would like to explain what that is. And this is taken from the book, How to Decide, written by Annie Duke. Uh, she's a poker player, right? Yeah. So totally. what, res- what resulting means is that basically I judge the decision based on the result. So if what I chose, if what I decided ended up turning out well, then it was a good decision. If it ended up turning not according to my expectations, then it was a bad decision. And I tell you why that model doesn't really work. Let's put mm-hmm. it to the test. And she shares that in the book. She says, imagine you're driving and you see a green light, right? And you decide on that green light to, of course, continue driving because it's a green light. And then you get caught up in a car accident because somebody came on the side and crashed you. You, according to this model, this was a bad decision to drive on a green light, right? Because the consequences were not so good. Now, imagine you're driving and you see a red light and you decide to drive as well. You don't stop on the red light and nothing happens. According to the model, you would think that driving on a red light was a good decision because, hey, nothing happened, right? Right. So we see that that model doesn't really predict whether our decisions are good or bad per se. So we need to find a better model. But that's what we normally do. When things go well, oh, it was a great decision because it turned out to be the way I want it. Yes. But otherwise, it was a bad decision. Right. That's resulting. And that's what we don't want to use to make to judge whether decisions were right or not. Right. Because yeah. that will lead to regrets, basically, if, if we work that way. Great example. It's a great example. Um, and, you know, it has so many, uh, let's just call it body reflections of what the end game was. Now you're processing that end game as being like, red light is good. Let's just go through all the red lights. And the reality is you're playing, it's a crapshoot if you do that. It's like throwing dice. It's not really a decision. Absolutely. And to be honest, you don't really have much control of the end result, right? No, the only no. thing you have control is on the actions along the way, the path, the decisions, but not the the, the consequence. Uh-huh. So, you know, I would like to suggest a better, a better way of making decisions. Today, we're going to talk about the decision-making test. But before we do that, let, let's talk about some basic principles. So we make sure that we're all aligned with the same concepts, okay? So first of all, let's understand the difference between what a decision is and an act and a choice, because I think we we sometimes confuse the two of them. A decision is a thought. So it's at the mental level, right? It's simply a thought and we have plenty of these. So we make a lot of decisions uh, throughout the day. A choice, on the other hand, is an action. Is when you take the decision and and do something about it, that becomes a choice, right? Now, we can look at choices and divide them in two different kinds of choices or actions. We have congruent actions, and these are actions that bring us into alignment. And then we have incongruent actions, and these are actions that take us out of alignment. Now, it's important to understand that definition and distinction because when we take aligned choices or congruent action, we create aligned consequences. And when we take misaligned or incongruent actions, we create misaligned consequences. What we're actually saying is that the energy of the choice dictates the energy of the consequence. And that's because of the law of cause and effect. Does it make sense? Yeah, it does. And, you know, we're going to talk about this a little bit more uh, because, you know, I want people to know this is not a good, bad thing. We're we're not going good, bad. It's not like you have two. See, sometimes when we talk about decisions, it's like you have one or the other. But no, there are varieties, there are ranges, there are things to consider, right? And so sometimes when we talk about this, people get very myopic 
And I know I've done it myself in my life. Well, if I don't take this, then it's going to be this. And we forget everything in the middle. And I think you're going to talk about that. Absolutely. And you said this is not a question of good or bad choices. Right. And you are absolutely right. And we didn't use those words. We use congruent or incongruent. Exactly. But it's actually, we want to even understand this deeper. The definition of congruent or incongruent is not absolute. It's subjective and personal to the person. So what's congruent for me or aligned for me, <laughs> right, might yeah. be completely misaligned for you. I mean, I'm sure you've been in that place that where you want to create something and yeah. you go, I'm going to do exactly what the other person that already did it, what they did, because it worked for them. It's going to work for me. I'm going to copy exactly. And then you do that only to find that it didn't work for you. Yeah. yeah. Now, is it that the formula doesn't work? No, it's actually that there is no real formula that everybody yeah. has their unique way of creating. So we need to have a way to discern what an aligned choice is for me yeah. and not assume that because align, it was aligned for somebody else will be aligned for me. So what would be perfect for me might actually be incongruent for the other person. Yeah. And I'm I so glad you mentioned that. Oh, oh I got it. And so let's just get, keep rolling. But I got to tell you, I have been spending the last, uh, I don't know, seven plus days in doctor's appointments. And I will tell you that I was incongruent with a number of doctors and maybe another people in the room. It doesn't mean one is wrong or the other, but that level of incongruency allowed me to look differently. It allowed me to look at other aspects of the test. It allowed me to eliminate some things. It also allowed me the opportunity to say, look, I great that you ran that test. It's incomplete. That's incongruent with what the doctor thought. Did I do anything yet? No. But this is what we're saying. You know, we get to have these decisions and then we have to decide what we do with them. Just because... Just because I made that decision about what a report said, I don't, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes Absolutely. when we are incongruent, especially with other people, we will fold and give up our vision, our dream, our idea, our point of view, right? And I know you're going to talk about that. Keep rolling. <laughs> yes. I, I can't wait to get to this. You got to yeah. help me with this today. <laughs> that's why, uh, that's why I like the test, because if we leave it up to our mind, to decide, right, um, to, to take control of the decisions along the way, then our mind will take us through the road of comfort or pleasing or conforming of what people tell you you should do, whether it's doctors or somebody else, right? right and then exactly. many times you end up where you started, creating more of the same, perhaps with a different facade, but you haven't actually created anything new or creating something that is completely incongruent to you. So the test allows us to have a system that we can work with to become much, much better at making decisions and increase the chances of living a life that is more aligned to how mm -hmm. we are designed to create. Beautiful. So let's go over the test. Yeah, let's. Let's do that. So in the, of course, there are three steps as always. So step number one is you want to first Remind yourself, you know, bring that clarity back to the front of your mind. What is it that you are working towards, right? What is it that you want to create? You always want to keep in mind, what is that I want to create? What's my vision? What's my end result? What's my goal? And also, not only what is that I want, but how do I want to feel? What's the feeling that attaining that goal will create for me? So kind of close your eyes, imagine yourself having that and see what is the feeling and the experience that you have when you see yourself, when you visualize yourself attaining that goal. And more importantly, what is the opposite of that feeling? And you see why we talk about that. So if the feeling in attaining the goal is freedom, then what is the opposite of that? Is it limitation? right? Is it constraint? Is it boredom? What is it? Uh, so, so it's important to be clear about that as well as what are the skills we talked about in the action plan, the skills that I need to create that and what is that I want to accomplish in the next 90 days. It's important to work with short-term 
milestones. So when we are clear about the what, and we look at the what as the, the milestone in the next 90 days, yes, the end result, but the first milestone, the feeling that I want to create, we want to move to step two. And now I have a decision to make. A situation came into, an opportunity came, a great opportunity. And now I have to decide if I'm going to say yes or not. So the first question we want to ask for every decision is, it's like we're passing these decisions through a test, okay? The first question is, is this choice part of my trajectory or is it taking me through a detour? Is it in alignment with what I want? Is this part of my trajectory? Pretty much like Google Maps. Is it taking me there or is it taking me to a, a detour? Um, and is it aligned with the feeling I want to create? Is this choice making me feel, let's say freedom, if we talked about it, or is it, may, is it making me feel limitation, right? So a choice is not enough that is aligned with the trajectory. It has to give you the feeling. Not just the end result has to give the feeling. Every choice along the way has to be in alignment with the feeling you're trying to create. Yeah. And then well, that, that's so important. I, I want to just make sure everybody hears you. You know, we're talking feelings. So when you start out and say, I think that's not a feeling, right? Well, yeah. What are you feeling in your gut? When you, when you talked about the vision, I went to the word freedom. Then when you talked about the the opposite, so to speak, the other feeling, you could see my eyes opened wide up. I don't know if you saw that, but my eyes opened wide up. I had my eyes shut and then my eyes opened wide up, almost like in shock. But we must pay attention to this, right? Absolutely. People want to create more abundance and the feeling is prosperity, but then they make choices along the way that feel actually the opposite. We can, the energy of the choice equals the energy of the consequence. I cannot create freedom if I'm making choices along the way from a place of obligation. Okay. I cannot create freedom out of obligation. So if my end goal is freedom and an opportunity comes my way and I say yes, and it feels obligation, that's not a congruent choice because it has the energy of the opposite of what I'm looking to create. Yeah. Make sense? It does make sense. And you know what? I study the consequences of obligations and violations of them for a really long time. And I really don't know many people that make them. You know, even Mother Teresa didn't see obligation. She called it her service. So what you're talking about, man, I, I hope people get what you're saying today because it is so key. Exactly. Exactly. And and it's about becoming aware not just saying yes or no out of nowhere, becoming aware there are three, three um, filters that every decision that I make, I pass them through. Is it aligned with my with where I'm going? Is it in my trajectory? Is it aligned with the feeling? Is it a choice that matches the feeling of the end result? And is it aligned with who I am and how I am designed to create my values, the way I create if I create more with um, internally by, you know, working on my own or I create more with other people, I need to study my successes to know how I am designed to create. People create differently. Everybody has their unique way of creating. So every choice I will ask, am I, am I following the way I'm designed to create or am I actually working the opposite way? So these are the three filters that I run every decision through, which help me, help me make decisions that are uh, more congruent to the vision, more aligned, and as a consequence, create more abundance, more um, congruent results. Mm -hmm. Does it make sense? It does make sense because automatically you can feel yourself lighter. Absolutely. You can feel Let me yourself tell you. lighter. Absolutely. The last time I remember I was working on uh, launching the Upscale and Grow Your Impact program for coaches. And then a, a corporate gig was presented to me. And when I ran that gig through the questions, I said, no, this does not align with what I believe and how I'm designed to create. So I actually said no. And the moment I said no, the launch went faster. Oh my gosh. I, 
I'm, I'm not going to take up a lot of time, but I got to tell you, you just solidified something for me because we're getting ready to launch and expand where it's, it's the weekend before the 4th of July. You're going to hear a lot more about it. Of course, you're part of our network, but there's always been a question mark in a lot of people's minds about what channel we should launch. There's been a question. Should we launch the addiction channel? Should we? And I have to tell you that I, I went to this event, did the women in women in the zone event, started a nonprofit for women. And I called Jessica after I got here and I said, Jessica, we are launching the women's channel first because of what you just said. I mean, I didn't know the steps, but as you're talking about them, I'm like, yes, yes, that's the do you, do you see what I'm trying to say? And and before that, we were like agonizing over it. I mean, I even started a nonprofit this month, Women in Media, and yet the light bulb didn't go on about the women's channel to be first. What do you think of that? <laughs> I love it. When you say no, not to a bad decision, when you say no to what's not congruent at the moment, it's so much easier to say yes to what it is and create more yeah. of that. Absolutely. Yeah. So I would I would love to leave the audience with some um, nuggets that I actually live by. And, and, you know, my students have heard me say that plenty of time. Um, so one thing that I'm really good at when it comes to decision is make decisions based on where you want to be, not based on where you are. Say that again for everybody. Need make to hear this that. Make decisions based on where you want to be, not based on where you are right now. I love it. Make decisions on where you want to be. Don't base them on where you are now. Yes. I also like to tell people, easy decisions create a difficult life. Harder decisions create an easy life. So sometimes, you know, we default to, no, let's just stay here. Let's just not rock the boat. <laughs> but don't make decisions based on where you are. Make decisions based on where you want to be. And if you think that way, it's going to be much easier for you to, to discern what you need to do right now. Yeah. I love that you said that because look, I probably didn't make a lot of friends these past seven days in support of my best friend. I probably asked too many questions. I probably agonized and nagged, you know, drink more water. I, I probably did but I don't regret a single moment of it. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I talk about decisions so much in, in our programs because, you know, it, I think this is one of the parts that we, we as people struggle the most, mm -hmm. but when you learn to do it right, according to what's right for you, then it becomes much fun right? For example, how to make decisions from intention and not from correction or fear. Oh my I, gosh. If I had no fear, would I do this? If I was in complete love, would I do this? I always tell people, you don't yeah. need to see the, the entire staircase to start. Yeah. You just need to take the first step and yeah. then the path will be revealed. The next step will be re revealed to you. And more importantly, and I think this is the one that I, I would love uh, the audience to remember the most, the quality of the outcome doesn't determine the quality of the decision. If your decision was made from a place of intention, considering it, whether it's congruent and aligned or not, then the outcome has nothing to do. Sometimes we make the best decisions and they don't turn out to be the best, the, the way we want. That doesn't mean that the decision wasn't right. Yeah. That is so important because sometimes when we make that decision, we may not see the second move or the third move that the decision will take us to. You know what I'm saying? And boy, I'm telling you, it is so important to understand the energy of this and the energy of what we're doing. You know, when I shared that story about the women's channel, somebody, you know, I can't remember who, Gabriella, but somebody looked at me and said, seriously, God, I mean, you, you didn't know that. And I just looked at them and said, I was awake, but I needed to become aware. I need to become aware of what was in my heart 
of of the women. I mean, we started the show 20 years ago to bring women back to this medium. There were five of us, Gabriella, five women that turned talk radio from angry talk radio, what, what it was, into this. And sometimes we forget. Now, I want to ask you, this is a great model for you. I know you've got decisions. It's a tool. It's a test. I love it. I hope people go back. How do people find out more about this? And then I don't know, like maybe you're going to share a little sneak peek on an upcoming decision you may be making. <laughs> okay. So how can people learn more about this yeah. is coachingacademy.net. We have plenty of resources there. Um, but, you know, one of the things that we talk in the beginning of this podcast is how to create a life of no regret. Do you remember that? Uh, totally. Totally. So, so I think that this episode goes back to the initial intention we had of talking about and bringing awareness of how to create a life of no regret. I think that we tend to regret a lot our choices. And if we learn to look at these choices, not from the consequence perspective, but why we made the choices we made and how we made that choices, we are going to save ourselves a lot of regrets. Yeah. Gabriella, I got on a plane after an event in Chicago and I had a moment where I could have taken the seat that was available or I could have upgraded a first class. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know your process, but I knew it. And that may seem like a small trite. It may seem insignificant to someone, but I will tell you that decision wasn't about first class. It was about being on my feet for three days and needing time to just chill out, sit next to a guy coming back to New Jersey, having a chit chat, having him help me pick out the right snack to eat that was delicious and having a great ride to come back so I could be refreshed when I got here for my best friend. It's hard to explain the importance of what you just said. But if people follow them, boy, will life be different, won't they? I want to finish by uh, sharing, wasn't planned, but I would like to share something that my husband taught me. You know, sometimes when I debated whether I should say something or make a, a certain choice, he said to me, sometimes it's better to make a small explosion that we have a smaller collateral damage than to wait. And then this becomes a bigger explosion with more collateral damage. Oh. That's also something that I live by. I live by make a decision, not based on where you are, based on where you want to be. And that thing that my husband taught me. Yeah, well said. And I'm telling you, if I didn't take that, those three hours of refreshing and renewing myself, I wouldn't have been prepared for what happened on the other end. Thank you, Gabriella. One more time. How do people find out about you? We are at coachingacademy.net. People can find us also on Facebook, the Coaching Academy, uh, social media, but coachingacademy.net is the best place. Thank you so much. What a great show. Thank you. It's so Thank important. You, Dr. Matt. I want to tell everybody now, we are making more decisions than you've ever imagined. You don't know you're doing them, but you're doing them. You're bombarded every day, thousands of times with social media, with emails, with conversations, with phone calls, more in, than ever humanity has been through. We are now being bombarded with every, every second there is something that somebody's asking you to decide. You may not think so, but turn on the TV, watch a commercial. This now from Gabriella will show you, help you. So take the decision-making test, follow what she said, go back and listen and open up the pathway to freedom and joy. And don't feel like regrets have to be your life path. We'll see you next time.